Hey, it's some old guy coding here again. And uh, hey, I got a box and it's got the Vicious uh, One sticker on the side of it there. That's pretty cool right there. That's pretty nice. Yeah, it's uh, something ordered from the uh, viciousone.com website here. And uh, I'll show you what it is here. We'll open her up. All right. Ta-da! The first piece. Look at that. That is, uh, what do they call it? The, um, looks very nice, feels nice. And besides that, there's this little box. Let's see what else I ordered. I ordered one of these jobbers, a connector that connects from the, um, the, <laughs> the rod here uh, to the shaft of a stepper motor. And I also picked up uh, several of these uh, brass uh, nuts that uh, run along there, just so I have some spares handy in case I ever need one. The reason I'm doing this, and I'll put up a picture of uh, uh, Vicious One's website here of, uh, about uh, using um, this guy to uh, be able to get more speed out of the Z-axis. And uh, actually, uh, I, I don't need speed out of the Z-axis for my CNC work. I don't think it's that big an issue if it takes a little bit longer to do that. But I am working on a project here, which all these parts have something to do with here, that, uh, that I'd like to get a little bit more speed out of the Z-axis for that project. And, and we'll see that project uh, pop up here in, a, in about a week or so, hopefully, if uh, things uh, go well. Working on some software there for that. So this looks very nice. It's been finished. It hasn't been cut. You know, it's finished on both ends, very nice and smooth. I always thought these guys were kind of cool. Amazing that they make something like that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go through the process of switching this over. Off, I think we need to uh, take out the Z-axis. Obviously, the uh, threaded rod has to go. And the pineapple up here gets replaced by the, uh, the expandable connector. So, of course, I didn't think this out very clearly. Um, this is way too long because, um, you know, this was the length before, and now instead of attaching down here where it was uh, with the captured coupling nut, it's going to be up uh, probably about that high, maybe even a little less because this is sitting on top of the assembly now instead of down here in, inside. So I need to cut this guy but, and it's probably going to be about that height that I have to cut it. I'll go back here and measure real quick. But uh, I wanted to show you something interesting here how smoothly these things go you know just by, by tipping it up and tapping it. <laughs> the, the nut just wants to spin right off of there. Well look at that. So I went ahead and cut this and uh, cut this in half. Try not to ratchet up too much, but the uh, the cut end I'm going to put up in the uh, connector here, of course. Now, to connect it down here, we're supposed to have some tension on this nut, so they're definitely in contact. So I'm going to kind of pull this nut down a little bit as I tighten up these guys. See if I can hold it down there. So we can get, to, of course, you got to drop the, the tool. See if we can keep some pressure so that those two shafts are, are held together by the spring. Okay, let me turn this guy and we'll hold some pressure down again. Okay. There's definitely. Uh, I can't push it up and make that spring move, but I can pull it down and make it move. And I believe we have some changes we have to make in the software and firmware here. Oh yeah, that moves a lot faster. Wow. 
I'll have to readjust the uh, what the firmware thinks it is for a uh, for a centimeter or a millimeter. There might be some firmware on the website that we can use. I'll take a look at that. So it's just like it was before, except that of course that it has a new top on it here. This white part is of course new. And that's all been assembled. This is the, uh, the nut that comes with the shaft here uh, from uh, vicious1.com. And as you can see in there, I've got that mounted in with some M3 uh, bolts threaded into the plastic only. Other than that, uh, we have the uh, coupling uh, nut, uh, the coupling, or not the coupling nut, but the, uh, uh, the this, this, uh, spring uh, connector up here. And that's been tensioned a little bit so that there is no upward spring between the shafts. So there you have it. We'll look at the software issues. All right, we're going to go ahead and download the software from the viciousone.com website for uh, uh, the ramps card that supports the that supports the lead screw over here. So we're going to go to this guy here actually. We'll scroll down here. We got the ramps 1.4. And there's the T8 lead screw versions right here. And I don't need the one with the uh, extruder and heated bed, because we're not doing that. So, let's open the folder that it's in. So there we are. Extract all. That's fine. And I want to sort by type. And there's the INO file. So I'm going to right click and open. All right, and we're using our Duino uh, 1.6.13 here. I'm not sure if that's the, uh, the latest or greatest, but let's see if it works with this one. So let's go ahead and just do a compile, sketch, verify compile, and see what happens. See if we're missing, we're probably missing that uh, U8G uh, lib that we'll have to add in. <coughs> You know, it seemed to have compiled correctly. It didn't indicate any errors. I wonder if that library is already attached in here. I think we're good to go. Let's give it a try. I'm going to move it down here where you won't be able to see and, and have it upload <coughs> to the device. Looks like the uh, board type is set up and the COM port is set up. So let's go ahead back to sketch here and say upload. And it says done uploading. Alright, so let's unplug that guy. <clears throat> I'm going to power him up here and we'll take a look. 1.1.0-1, and we don't get the Vicious logo anymore. Well, that's kind of sad. Well, let's see what looks different here. Got the same deals there. What's under, uh, whoops, I meant to go under prepare, not control. Well, the different setup looks like, uh, you know, the early 1.0 uh, business. But uh, let's see if we can move those axes now. Let's go in here, we'll move X. And nothing happens. Because you have to pick the size. There we go. One more time. Oh yeah, it moves. Okay, and then let's go back to... Move axis to move Y. 10 millimeter one so I can actually see it. Let's go to the 10 millimeter one here on Y. Oh yeah, that works. Alright, so now let's go back and we're going to go do Z. Not extruder. Z. Huh. It allows us to do the 10 millimeter on a Z, which has never happened before. So let's see if we just click her once here. Yeah, it's ticking along. Not super fast, but uh, faster than uh, before, I think. Let's go ahead and jump down again. Yeah. 
Yeah, not too bad. So that seems to work. Now the question is, um, do we have everything set? So the other thing we're going to have to do when we're in uh, ESTL cam, we need to uh, update that um, maximum Z speed in the configuration. And I'll put a picture up here where I've adjusted that. I posted uh, in on the forum and I asked, uh, you know, what value should be go, go in there, and uh, 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 Ryan did the calculation for me and uh, put the max value in there. So, thanks for watching.